Hi and welcome to another episode of Reaper TV. In this video, I'm going to show you one of the simple little things that once you know about it can change the way that you use Reaper. And that's the ability to do things under your mouse pointer. Now that sounds really simple and really kind of like boring, but the reality of it is once you start to realize all the things you can do with this, it really can speed up your workflow tenfold, if not more so. So in this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to set this up, and then you can get as creative as you want to be by applying any kind of shortcut you want underneath your mouse pointer. So let's just jump into Reaper, take a look at the actions, and set some things up. Now, one of those things that makes Reaper such a powerful and amazing program to work with is also one of its shortcomings, and that is the ability to create so many different shortcuts and actions to do almost anything you want. If you're a new user to Reaper, that can seem incredibly daunting to think, have I got to set up all of these different tweaks and things in there? Well, you don't have to set up tons of things, but you do have a great amount of flexibility. So when you find something you think, I'd like to be able to do that quicker, then Reaper pretty much gives you a way of doing that. And using it under your mouse pointer is one of those things that really does help speed up the work process. So I've got a simple piece of audio, and let's just say I want to go through and chop this up into the individual parts. Normally what I need to do is click where I want to place the mouse pointer, press the S on the keyboard, click to add the next one, press S, and so on and so forth. So it's not really that complex, but it is something that takes a lot of time if you have to do it over and over again. So let's just jump into the Actions section. Show our Actions list. And if you've never been in the Actions section of Reaper, this is where you can simply go through and search for something that can be done inside Reaper, and then you can assign a shortcut to it. If you want to get even more complex in there, you can create macros where you can apply a series of shortcuts or a series of actions together, and then you can assign a keyboard shortcut or a mouse action to that, and then just run all of those in one go by simply clicking that keyboard shortcut or applying that mouse action. So it really is very, very powerful. We're going to keep it fairly straightforward for this video. Video, but don't think you're limited by what I'm showing you. You can apply so much more to it. Okay, so what I'm going to do for this example is I'm going to search for a split mouse cursor. Once I do that, you can see I come up with a couple of different options. If you have the SWS extensions installed, which I would recommend is free and expands what you can do inside Reaper tenfold, then you're going to see some additional options, and they're going to be preceded by SWS to tell you that these are part of that extension pack but we're interested in these first couple. You can see we've got split item under mouse cursor. We've also got the same with select left or select right, which what that would do is the first one would just split it wherever your mouse pointer is. The second one would split it and then select the item to the left of it. And the third one would select the item to the right of it. This is something, like I say, you might have reason to do that. We're gonna keep it simple and just select this first option to split item under mouse cursor. Once I've selected that, I can now go through and assign a shortcut to it. So if I come down to the bottom left-hand side, you can see Shortcut for Selected Action. So I'm going to click Add on there, and I'm going to just then apply the keyboard shortcut I want, which is going to be Shift and S. You can see that now maps that. If you click OK, and this has already been mapped to something else, you get a warning, and it'll tell you what it's been mapped to. So you're always going to get a notification if you accidentally go to overwrite something important. You can then decide if you think, yes, I want to, or no, I don't. So what I'm going to do is click OK on there. We'll just get rid of this now, close that down. And if I come over to my audio, I'm going to hold the Shift, position my mouse where I want it to be, and just press S on the keyboard. Same again, S on the keyboard, while holding Shift key down, S on the keyboard. And I've automatically now just cut those items exactly where my mouse pointer was. Now, as cool as that is, there's still a couple of limitations just by using that method. If we have snapping enabled, it's always going to snap to the nearest grid marker when you do that sort of chop, no matter how far away from it you are. So if I wanted to get nice and close to this edge, it would make no difference. It would still snap to the nearest guideline, which, OK, it's not the end of the world, but we can override that. We don't need to go in and manually enable and disable that snap. So let's call back up our actions list. All we're going to do is we're going to create a simple macro. Now, this is a really simple example, but it shows you how you can build up multiple different steps and apply those to a keyboard shortcut and interact with your mouse interaction as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for disable snapping to start off with. So disable snap. So you can see we've got snapping, disable snap. What we're going to do is come down to the custom actions, click new. We're going to find that on there, and that's going to be the first step. We're going to set this to disable the snap. So we'll do the same again on there. Disable snap, find that item drag that over to the right-hand side. That's the first step in our actions. 
Next up, we're going to say Enable Snap. Do the same thing again, drag that over there. So we've now got the Enable and the Disable. Finally, we're going to do the Split Mouse Cursor. So we're going to drop that in between the two. So what our action is going to do, is going to first of all, disable the snapping. If it's already disabled, it'll ignore it. It'll then split it under the mouse cursor, which we've just seen. Then finally, it re-enables the snapping, just to make sure that we don't end up with this being turned off when we think it's on and so on. Give that a simple name. So we're going to call this Snap and Cut. And we're just going to simply come down and click OK on that. Let's clear our search at the top here. And what you're going to find is that our snap and cut is now listed as part of an actions because it's been applied to a set of actions. So now we can come down and we can just add that keyboard shortcut again. So we'll use the same one, which is going to be Shift and S. Click OK on there and close that down. And now we're ready to try out our new macro. So again, we can use the Shift and S keyboard shortcut, bring our mouse pointer anywhere we want inside our sample. Control and S splits it exactly where we want. So we can now go close to our item and easily go through, cut those exactly where our mouse pointer is without worrying about the snapping, without having to enable and disable that. We can then just go through, delete the bits that we don't want, and we've simply cleaned up our audio without having to mess about with turning snapping on and off, positioning where we want to sort of select things, all done with a simple macro and under the mouse cursor for dealing with exactly where that particular macro is going to take effect. That's all there is to it. Have a look in those actions, see the kind of things you'd like to do, see the different possibilities that are available through using this simple option. Now, in my opinion, this is one of those areas that helps set Reaper apart from so many of its sort of peers. Just the ability to customize things in such an intuitive and easy way. Well, if you've done anything like this yourself and you created your own macros and your action sets, let me know about them in the comment section below. I'd love to see the kind of thing you guys are doing out there when you're creating your own custom shortcuts to work with and become more efficient with your audio sessions. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it's going to help you get up to speed with creating your own actions and speeding up your workflow. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, hit that bell icon to be notified every single time we release new content on the channel. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, or anything else you'd like to see covered in future videos, pop that in the comment section below. And until next time, happy mixing.